Charter schools in Indiana have a performance contract with their authorizer that specifically outlines the standards that that school must meet in order to continue to serve kids. Unlike traditional public schools that can continue to serve kids forever with zero accountability, charter schools must perform or they get closed. So when I think about the levels of accountability within our K-12 education system, charter schools are held accountable to a greater extent than any other school type in the entire state of Indiana. If they don't perform, they don't continue to operate. And that's a misconception that a lot of well-meaning Hoosiers have. The reality is that if you ask any charter school leader the extent to which they are held accountable, they will tell you that the accountability is real it's rigorous and they feel the pressure to perform and if they don't perform, they get shut down. So charter schools, um, definitely we have autonomy, which is one of the, the, the beauties of being in a charter school. I enjoy that as I used to teach in a charter school in Michigan, I enjoy that. And as an administrator, I enjoy it also. Um, but it does not mean that we can do whatever we want. Being a charter school means that we have um, the, the opportunity to meet students' individual needs or to provide for um, what our educators, how they may flourish in a certain way. We, we have to follow the same regulations as any other school. Um, we have to make sure that our teachers are certified or that they're working towards their certification. Um, we have to take the same tests and we have to meet those same criteria um, that any traditional school would have to. And so um, we're still held to the same high standards but we're not always given the funding. And so sometimes, you know, we're, we're made to reach this bar, but then they're saying, well, we need you to do what all the other schools are doing, but we can't give you the funding that's needed. Being a public charter, uh, we face scrutiny 24-7. Um, whether it's, you know, be, making sure that we're being fiscally responsible, that we are governing within the, the you know, state regulations, or that we're actually meeting kids' academic needs and kids truly are progressing. And so having an authorizer, we have a huge checklist of things we have to do every year. And if we don't do that, we don't exist. Um, you know, if you are in a, another public arena and you're maybe not hitting those marks, you're still gonna stay open. You're the community school. You are, you know, a property tax funded facility and those things here, you know, it, we said we are going to do these things. If you don't do those things, you're not open. There's a myth that goes around that charter schools don't have accountability, but actually we have more people that we answer to. We answer to the parents, we answer to our authorizers, and we answer to the Department of Education. Our students um, take the same assessments as traditional district schools and are given a grade and are held to those same accountability measures. Um, and so, just like any other public school, there's accountability, but I, um, in a sense, charter schools have a few more folks to answer to than the district. You know, it's funny, when people talk about accountability in charter schools, the first thing I think of is in 2002, there, there was probably um, a fraction, maybe 10% of what we have now as far as the reports that we did for the state. And even then, I would have told you how accountable we were, right? Like, that was the right 10%. Now it's the number's much higher than that. Um, and so there's been this continuing, you know, like we have to make sure, we have to make sure. We've known this from the beginning. So when we made this agreement with our authorizer, we got to say how we would show that we were being successful. You know, again, from the very beginning, charter schools were set up to be, to have more autonomy, right? And to have more freedoms. But the original intent was for those freedoms, you're going to have more accountability. Right, so at the base level, the accountability is, are people going to come to your school or not? Parents can vote with their feet, right? And so they don't have to come to your school. Different than in a traditional district where they are assigned to one of the schools in that district. And the district can be great, the district can be bad, and it doesn't matter because that's where the kids are going. So that's the first level of accountability is parents voting with their feet. Then you have, as we've talked about, you know, the regular independent audits every single year of your finances. You have your authorizer who's looking at your uh, performance every year and they decide, are we going to renew you for your charter, whether it's a five-year charter or a seven-year charter, are we gonna renew you or not? And then if anything bad happens, they can, certain, they can close you at any point in time. And authorizers across the state have done that. 
which again, never happens with a traditional district. There's a lot of misconception around the accountability. And so charters, because we're state funded, uh, you know, funding follows the student. And so because of that, our students are taking, you know, the SAT, our students are taking iLearn. They're held accountable with the same state assessments that your traditional public schools are held to. Uh, and we actually have an additional layer of accountability because our authorizer, Trine University, they are coming in monthly and we are having conversa conversations around best practice and you know we're looking at our academic and our growth data we're looking at our discipline and attendance data and we're having conversations around how can we best serve our students in the classroom uh, as well as you know at the macro level the programming that we can offer so the charter is the accountability and we are engaged in that writing process so the autonomy is within the boundaries of the charter within the parameters that we set that have been asked of us to approve this charter. How will you serve special populations? How will you serve English language learners? How will you wrap around students encountering homelessness? What, what are you going to do to make sure everyone is supported in your school? And then also, what is your unique innovative approach? What makes you different? Why do you need to exist in addition to the traditional district? Uh, that's that unique autonomy, but it's all very clearly defined in the charter that we have to follow from day to day. Of course, also like all public schools, we're free, we have to complete standardized testing, and we are accountable for those outcomes. Accountability and autonomy. So one of the reasons why I left my traditional public school was I wanted to have more autonomy as a building leader. So things like having the autonomy around the length of your school day, the length of your school year, the curriculum that you use, and even the program being Spanish Immersion. But with that autonomy comes increased accountability. I think that's what people don't realize. When I was in the district, we were accountable to the school board of the district and the IDOE at a distance. We understood that. But in a public charter school, we're not only accountable to our board, also accountable to um, our authorizer, also accountable to IDOE, also accountable to, in our particular case, um, the IPS school board too. So what has to be understood is with increased autonomy comes increased accountability. It's not the opposite. And I can say specifically because I've lived both, it's very different in the public charter school space because there's so much accountability, as there should be.